BG, what? you couldn't run anyway, mate. You <laughs> stay. What I had to do, Don, I had to get the I ball and put it in the back of the net, and that's what I did. I remember when I signed, when I signed, first day, I I smashed you in training. You never went near me. This is the official Leeds United podcast. How are you finding Leeds since since you've arrived? Um, I like it. I like it quite a lot. Um, I live in Harrogate. Um, It's nice, though, and yeah. Of course, it's a new country, um, new people, but um, the people are very friendly here. And um, yeah, it's a very nice, though. Harrogate, eh? That's the posh place, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I heard so, yeah. You know, I used to live there, didn't I? Ilya, I made a big mistake when I played for Leeds United because I bought a house in Harrogate as well, but I didn't realise that okay. the manager the manager lived three doors up. So I could oh, not go, oh. I couldn't go out and do anything. It's a good place to settle in. So obviously you, you've made it, it's a huge transition um, coming from another country to settle in. You know, I, I never, I had to do that in Australia. Um, 13 years ago, I made the transition. It's not easy. So how, how was, how was that, um, how was that felt and what, what made it easier for the, for the move over? Yeah. The first thing it made more easier was the people here, <clears throat> which are very kind and friendly. This was quite important for me. And, um, yes, of course, it's not so easy to move to another country, um, with, with, um, yeah, quite a new culture and everything and the new football, which is the main thing I'm here. Um, you have to adopt, you need a little, little bit of time. Um, and I think this is normal. Um, and now I think I'm getting quite used to it. And, um, yeah, but the, 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 very uh, friendly and kind people here helped me a lot um, in all areas of the club. Yeah, I think it's what, what I've noticed since you've come into the team. You see me play very balanced. You understand the game. You know what you're kind of doing. Is it? Is it like like Michael has said? Is it? Has it been difficult to adjust? I know you've got a good group of lads around you as well. It just yeah. feels like for me, you're all on the same page. You're all fighting for the same thing. Yeah, that's right. The quality is huge here. Um, especially also in my position um we have a lot of good players and you have to show yourself but also you are a team you know you you want to win together and um it's not like every day you want to show that you are better than the other you know because it's a team sport and um the most important thing is that you win um yeah but but um, because of the quality of the players um you improve you have to improve otherwise um you can't survive here um, and this is very good for the whole team. Well, I'm just going to read you a stat out because what Dom's just mentioned there, obviously, is key to this. You were voted the man of the match in the league win against Cardiff City. Now, I know you've had to wait for your opportunity due to circumstances settling in, and obviously, I'm to do going to the centre-half role for that midfield, but the game against Cardiff, you completed eight, uh, 68 passes out of 70. An impressive set. This is a 97% success rate, and you set a new record for a Leeds United player. Did you know that? This, yeah, I heard it. Um, it's nice though. Um, but I, I heard, yeah, it's 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 great. Also, um, with the huge win in Cardiff, but also I think for my game is important not to play only from side to side. You also want to play forward. Um, and I think I did it also in Cardiff. Um, also to play like um, more high risk balls, um, longer balls, um, and if you can do both. Um, risk balls and but also have a 97 percent um pass accuracy then this is of course uh, great because i can also have maybe 100 if i play only back and to the side but uh, this is yeah. not um yeah. this is not the important thing what's it like when obviously you've got so many players forward thinking players strikers you know we've got so much pace within that team is it at times where you want to get on that ball and try and find that pass from different angles yeah, that's right. Um, I know we have a lot of pace in the front and I know I can pass the ball to every player in the front and um, the player can create something. And this is my job to to feed them, um, the offensive players, and then I know that they can create something. Is, is Daniel Farker giving you that license as well, uh, Iran, to, to yeah. say every touch forward, look for forward passes initially? Yeah, of course. This is also what the boss um um, expects from us and also he said to, of course he wants that we have um, a good structure and we have the ball and have position a lot but also he says every time if you have the opportunity to play a long ball and it's it's maybe it's going to be a clear chance then you have to play it um, yeah and uh, it's good that the, that the boss is giving you this uh, type of freedom yeah, it seems like the manager, when he's come in, he just seems to have everyone... It seems like when I watch Leeds United play, it feels like what the manager's told you is, 
you kind of listen, you've listened to what he's told you and you're Everybody's embracing it, Dom, aren't they? Yeah, it seems like, yeah, there's a bit of a buzz at Ellen Road yeah. and obviously we yeah. lost that a little bit last year when we got relegated but now it feels like there's a real high energy within the within within the fan base everyone's up for it yeah of course I think you can you felt it yesterday um, after this goal the whole stadium was buzzing and such a great atmosphere also the last 10 minutes you know every time we get the ball the whole uh, the whole stadium was buzzing and uh, we want to go forward and uh, I think you saw it that we wanted this goal yesterday so much and this is the reason why we get such a penalty and then we score because I think you have to want it you know as a team and um, the spirit is there and if you do this then um, yeah then um, the things are going to be well for you and yeah you know when the you know when the referee kind of lost a little bit of the hold of the game and there was a there was a big there was a big challenge went in and obviously there was a, a coming together with the yeah. players. Did you feel the fans rise to that occasion as well? Because obviously that, that really got the Leeds fans pumped up because they saw you as players' reaction. And did you react off the back of the fans lifting as well to, to keep that little push going at the end? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's um, from both sides, you know, the, the, the stands, they feel that we want, we feel that the fans want. And then it's, yeah, it's like a... Um, very very nice feeling then on the pitch because you you feel the energy and if you feel the energy then it's great and also we knew that they want to provoke us that they want to interrupt the game the whole time um but uh yeah i think um it was um absolutely right that we won this game and absolutely um yeah because of of the whole energy you know of of the stadium and also from us on the pitch me me and don were just talking beforehand about our european journeys i'm an ac milan shirt here we had an amazing okay. Champions League run and the, the vibe around the, the city and the vibe around the football club at Elland Road was huge. And, you know, we're, we're, that's what we're kind of getting back together and what we're feeling. Um, you know, it, it brought back so many fond memories. So what's the key for you to maintain? What do you think is the key for the Leeds to maintain this kind of form and intensity to chase the teams up above? First of all, it's amazing that you have such kind of... Uh, yeah, of uh, um, of wind and uh, you have sun, uh, done such amazing things for Leeds, which is incredible. Um, for us, it's now um, important that we we keep like this to keep the drive like this to to know every every game uh, we have to win. We we want to win. Um, these three points are so important every time. It doesn't matter against who you play because three points are three points. Mm, and um, this is uh, yeah very important for us and also to stick as a team together which I think everybody saw yesterday yeah I've noticed that straight away the, the team spirit is, is so important um, who's the characters within the group who's the, who's the <laughs> ones who make you laugh who's the, who's the one who puts the music on who's the, who's the real characters within the group you, you know it leads oh we have a lot of funny guys here I have to say um yeah, um, I would go with uh, uh, Charlie. Is a very uh, funny guy. Um, yeah, I have a lot of contact to Jane, which is also um, very funny. And yeah, of course, uh, Cree, Willie are always good <laughs> for a joke. Um, yeah, we have, uh, we have a lot of players. And um, also, it doesn't matter if you're young or older. Um, and this is uh, very nice to, to see every day here. Have you heard that Joel Peru is quite a prankster? Is that correct? He seems a very quiet yeah, man, but I've yeah, heard a few right. things he that he's. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah he yeah. has oh. also a lot of a lot of memes, and he can show you every time some funny video on 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 Instagram <laughs> or uh, I don't know which social media. But uh, every time he's yeah, he's very funny. There you go. So Bridgie it is was true. Well, the one I, when when I played with Bridgie, he didn't have any banter. He wasn't that funny. <laughs> Steady so, on you, <laughs> yeah. you horrible man. I'm only, only joking. You're only saying you that because right, I got you all the time. It was the ice bucket challenge yeah. that I hit. It's every time I went to the <laughs> toilet, I got an ice bucket over the top of the, the locker out of the cubicles. <laughs> horrible. Listening on together. You made a bold move, you know, coming from the Bundesliga Cup and Werder Bremen to, to come to Leeds and you were, you know, the team that were heading to the championship. So can you talk us through your thinking and your thought process uh, and, and how the move came about, please? Yeah, of course. So um, I grew up in Bremen. Um, when I was 15, I went there and then I played eight years for the club. And I felt in the summer that uh, maybe I want to do something new, um, want to improve my game um, to yeah, also maybe another kind of football. And then, yeah, on the last two days of the of the transfer period, I want to do also something which is good for me. I, I wouldn't have changed the club if, if there wasn't such a good offer from a club which I knew and which is big. 
And yeah, then I um, have a, a, um, a talk with, with the boss, with Farke, and I have a very great talk um, with him. And then also I knew that um, Leeds is not the normal uh, championship uh, team. So I knew that we want to get promoted as, as soon as possible. Um, and I knew it's a massive big club. And also I think everybody in, in the world uh, knows that um, and the Premier League is the best league in the world. And we are very, very um, near to to go to the Premier League, hopefully. Um, and um, yeah, so I knew that this is going to be very good for me and also because I can improve my game and also I can improve as a person, which is also, I think, um, very important. Um, and yeah, if you can uh, um, live um, with 23 um, and play for Leeds, I think... There are a lot of uh, worst things in the world. No, I think you're right. I think you, you've, you've said it properly there. It's like when I signed for Leeds United coming from Liverpool, I played at Liverpool for a long time, then came to, to Leeds United. Two different clubs, but with great history. Yeah. And um, I had to adapt from being a Liverpool player into a Leeds United player. And yeah. the one thing I remember when I first learned Eddie Gray um, spoke to me, uh, who's our coach at the time, he said, when you play for Leeds United, we want to see passion and we want to see tackles. And that's what yeah. I went out and did. And, yeah. you know, I think sometimes yeah. that's part of the DNA of Leeds United and the fans yeah. sometimes demand that in a way. Yeah. They like people to put a foot in. Of course, of course. Um, I think if you if you show on the pitch that you wanted it so much and um, then also the people will will uh, have no problem with it when you make a mistake or something Correct. but they want to see that you that you give everything and um, that you do everything uh, for this club um yeah which which is very nice because you knew as a player if i give everything then the fans are behind you correct yeah i agree yeah i yeah. know no, well, well, I, well said because you obviously you know what it takes to get promoted because you you did it with Eder Bremen and and got them yeah. from Bundesliga two to the top division. Uh, that must have been a, an amazing occasion for you. But I I just want to go back because it's a big thing. I moved I moved out when I was a YTS at Sunderland. I left when I was a teenager to go and live in a hostel. Now I only went about five mile away from my parents. Now you've moved from a young age from Bulgaria to Germany. So that must have taken, that must have been very, very tough for you. How did you handle the situation and um, what were your parents' feelings behind that at a young age? Yeah, so first of all, um, my dad was also a football player and then oh, we I know was that. a baby. He was very we, good, eh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was very good also, yeah. And um, we moved when I was a baby um, to, to Germany, um, my parents, my sister and me. Um, and yeah, um, I never um, lived really in Bulgaria. Um, so I grew up in Germany and then when I was 15, I left uh, the home of my parents and uh, went to Werder Bremen. And this was quite a difficult time because I was 15 and um, my parents lived like 400 kilometers away from me. And it was tough because I'm a very family person, you know, I'm a very social person and it wasn't so easy at the beginning. Um, also, you are in the in the boarding school with um, with other um, players at Werder Bremen. Um, and it was tough though, because I, I, I didn't see my parents a lot and um, especially like the Christmas days or something, you know. But um, yeah, I also get used to it and I make a lot of new friends there um, at this age. And um, yeah, then it became more easier and easier. And so since I'm 15, um, I live alone. Was it... Um beneficial having a father that played the game before you understood the situation did he did he give you um advice or was he was he like my father where he was like you've got to stick it out you must do this this is the dream was it was he was he a nice mentor or was he a hard mentor on you no he was a nice mentor um i knew always when we played um against each other maybe tennis or football or whatever and i was like 12 13 14 and he beats me in every sport but <laughs> He never, he never let me to win, you know. He, he always, always beats me. And uh, now, when we do such kind of things, I win, and uh, it's nice though now. Um, but it's, yeah, it's very nice to have a father who also played the game and who is um, now, uh, uh, um, uh, who is coaching now, because you can, you can talk to him and he can also improve your game, you know, because he's watching every game of mine when he has the time. 
And um, yeah, we speak a lot about details and how I can improve and what I can make better or what I did great. Um, it's it's very nice though. And it's like a common uh, communic uh, way. Like um, we speak to each other. It's not like you have to do this, this, this. No, no, tell me what you feel in this situation. Okay, uh, I tell you how, how I saw it from the TV or here from the stands. And yeah, it's uh, very, very um, good for me um, because he helps me a lot. Yeah, I think that's class, that. Um, obviously, I think any kind of help you can get as a professional player, you take it, you listen yeah, to what yeah. they tell you, and especially from your father, who's obviously experienced himself, he's coached and played himself. That's exactly what you need, and I think it's give you a good grounding yeah, um, yeah. To, to start your career. Football, I call it, it's the roller coaster, highs and lows. You know, we everybody wants to do the job that we've done, and obviously what uh, Ilya is doing at this moment in time. But there is some there is some periods where you, you, we go through tough times. I had it with injuries, you know. Dom's had it with transfers and, and going from from different clubs and things. And obviously after football, Dom, you've you know you've had a, an incredible battle to to come back from. So you you know you're an inspiration to many people. But to have that kind of advice from a father figure that's you know been there and breathed it, it, I think that can be so much more beneficial. Absolutely, it's very beneficial. Also, when you got times where, of course, the people from the outside don't see it so much like you, but um, for me, example, when I um, was the first two years at the first club at Werder Bremen and I didn't play, you know, I played for the under 23s or it wasn't so uh, such a nice time for me. You know, it, it was difficult. Yeah. Uh, I want to play, but um, I, I didn't get a chance to play. And then to have uh, parents and especially my father who who helps me and who says to keep uh, to be calm, to work um, and that you will get the chance if you work hard enough. And this is, um, yeah, this is um, how it how it get then there. I don't want to I don't want to cause family disruptions here, right? Because your dad had yeah, five hundred no, no, plus no. appearances um, in professional game. But I've had a look. Your dad only made thirteen appearances for the Bulgarian national team, but he scored one goal, and his son already has fourteen. So you've beaten <coughs> your dad in appearance. So so who's who's the who's the, be who's the better player? Oh, I can't, I can't tell you that because he was a little <laughs> bit more offensive than me. Um, but now after my 14 game, he congrats me. He said, well done. Uh, you have now more matches, games uh, for Bulgaria than me. And you are only 23. So yeah, he's, he's very happy for me. And he said, hopefully you're going to have a much, much better career than I have. Who's the, uh, the players oh, yeah. that you admire? Um, who's the players that you know as a young kid who do you look up to and who did your dad look up to as a player as well um, for me when there was the prime Barcelona team with Iniesta Xavi and Busquets it was quite amazing uh, to watch and now I really love to watch uh, um, Rodri of course uh, Frank, Frank yeah. de Jong and uh, Toni Kroos for me yeah. who is yeah he's playing since 10 years at top level for Real Madrid um has won five times the Champions League and it looks so easy, you know, when you watch <laughs> Tony Kroos, you think like, yeah, everybody can do it. Um, but it's so difficult and um, yeah, I, I appreciate his game a lot and uh, it's amazing how he plays. Have Dom, you played against a very famous Bulgarian footballer as well, didn't you? When you were at Liverpool? Yeah, um, Lechkov. I don't know if you remember Lechkov. Have they ever pronounced that right? Yeah, I mean, he was it's, an incredible yeah. player. I mean, we played in a pre-season friendly. I was at Liverpool and absolutely, I couldn't get near him. I was trying. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I was yeah, trying. Yeah. Um, but he was very, very good player. Um, well, what a, yeah, like you say, he, he tore me apart. Absolutely one, tore me apart. Well, the one that I lo used to love watching was obviously Stoichkov when he was at Barca and uh, yeah. back in his day. Yeah, he was yeah, incredible. Stoichkov. And played against the guy. I mean, uh, Dom, did you ever play against Dimi Berbatov? Because, by the way, what mm. a player he is. Yeah, most of yeah, most of yeah. Uh, yeah. Like you say, then people have got that great first touch and yeah. the awareness and the awareness as well. That's a real skill to have both, and yeah. uh, that first touch for me is so important in the final third, just to, to kill that ball, and then you can do what you want. Then it's just that first touch is key. Well, where we're going with this, Ilya, is because obviously you're a real Bulgarian star now, and you're one of a few Bulgarians playing. Um, in a major European country, so do you do you feel some extra responsibility and pressure that come that's going to come with that going into the future? Pressure, not so much, um, but 
Yeah, I hope that the Bulgarian football is going to improve because um, not quite a long time ago we had um, amazing players um, like you said Stoichkov, Lechkov, Berbatov, um, also um, uh, Balakov. He played in Germany. Um, we had such a great team in '94 in the World Cup in the U in the USA. Bulgaria was fourth, you know, uh, which is amazing to be in the World Cup and to uh, to be fourth. Um, but yes, uh, we have to improve um, the the Bulgarian league and especially the Bulgarian players because, how you said, it's it's a little bit sad that um, not a lot of players are playing in, in Europe uh, from Bulgaria, and um, this is also the reason why the national team is at the moment not at this level um, how it should be. Um, but hopefully, um, we are going to to make a great team with new uh, players now, with younger players who are coming up and. Um, who have to transfer to to Europe um, to play in a much better league, which is very important for us. All leads, aren't we? The official Leeds United podcast. Yeah, I think uh, the very nice thing is that he says what he thinks. You know, he's not trying to 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 lie or or to be another person. You know, he says he says what what he thinks. And this is very important because um, then, you know, as a player, OK, um, I can trust this guy. Um, and uh, quite a lot, um, I think the players have also the same opinion or vision, um, what he says. And this is very good. And um, yeah, it's it's good for the team. It helps the team. But yeah, how I said, um, he said it very in front of the team, you know, I, in front of the media, maybe it's a little bit, um, it's something else. But here, when we are in, in closed rooms, um, he, he speaks very honestly um, about the topics on and off the pitch. I have to say, I mean, there's a, there's a few managers Dom's mentioned there that Leeds have gone through in the past. As an ex-player that you I look and think, oh, I wouldn't want to play for this guy. In Daniel Farker, every time I turn up and I hear the guy speak and I watch you play, I want to get the boots back on him because it just looks like such a, you know, <laughs> not that I could do the running anymore, but it just looks like such a joy to play BG, with. So, you know, BG, what? you couldn't run anyway, mate. <laughs> stay. What I had to you do, not run, mate. I had to get the I ball and put listen, it in the back of the net, BG, and that's what I did. I, I remember when I signed, when I signed, first day, I, said, I smashed you in training. You never went near me. <laughs> hey, well, I, I didn't like a challenge, but what I could do is oh, get I'm the ball joking. and put it in the back of the net, lad. <laughs> All right, mate. <laughs> I wasn't joking. Yeah, but yeah, I, quite, gonna... I quite enjoyed the, I quite enjoyed yeah. knocking you over at times, Bridgie. Listen, when you came up against you, <laughs> Woodgate and the Chief, <laughs> I, I had three very good mentors to get kicks from me because every single one of you used to snap us in two. Now, really, away from football, let's talk about you. I just we'll we'll go into a few quick fire questions, but I just want to know what what are your what are your hobbies away from um, the the game because we've had a lot of players on here. Um, some like their golf. A lot of them love gaming. Um, I know that we're going to try and get a, a game of FIFA and Call of Duty against some of the players online at some point. But what 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 um what interest do you have away from the game? Um, I like tennis, but I can't play so much. Um, but I also watch tennis, and um, I like I like to read. Um, I like to read, um, and to hear and watch podcasts. And also, yeah, sometimes I play also with with the boys. Um, yeah, FIFA, um, pro clubs. Um, this is yeah. These are the the main things. And of course, to to be around friends, family members. Um, it's the most crucial and important thing for me. What about your diet? Because obviously, Bridgie's diet is not the best. I'm just <laughs> so I'm just checking. I'm just checking that you eat the right stuff. I eat the right stuff. I try to. I Perfect. try to. Um, yeah, I think in this way, I'm. I try to be very professional. Because Bridgie likes Bridgie when we used to go to Mac. It's just basically Bridgie lived in McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, I certainly did. Yeah, he did. Yeah. He did. Because we all used to we all used to have gold cards. Believe it or not, when you played for a football club back in the day in the Premier League, we used to get gold cards for McDonald's. Which menu yeah, you but, would order? But, crazy. Menu it, it, you order it whatever worked. you wanted. It worked it was out. Free. Uh, it worked out. So I don't know how. <laughs> it did for a little bit. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it to anybody listening. Up and coming future footballers, stay away from that stuff, please. <laughs> right, when you just talk about the podcast, right? So here you go. What uh, what what do you listen to podcast wise at the moment? What can you recommend to our listeners? What what is um, what what can we go to? Yeah, so there's a German one. It's called uh, Lanz and Precht. Then uh, I like to hear Huberman, um, Andrew Huberman podcast, um, the Diary of a CEO. It's also very nice with Steven. And um, Chris Williamson, uh, Modern Wisdom. 
Fantastic. Good recommendations to all you listeners out there right. and also the official Leeds United podcast. That's a great listen. Of um, course, of course. Music. What's your music? What do you listen to? For um, a lot of things. I also listen to Bulgarian music, uh, to German, um, hip hop, um, rap, um, all kind of music. Don, what was your go-to back in the day? You've got to be a Beatles boy. Uh, well, obviously, when I grew up in Liverpool, yeah, it was a lot of Beatles yeah. um, stuff. But um, I don't know. To be honest, I just like a bit of anything. I don't really care. As long as it's lively, I'm, in, I'm involved. I like a um, bit of a dance up when I, with the boys. You know, back in the day with you, Bridgie, I've seen you dance as well, Jesus. Dancing on the ceiling. Flipping. Oh, what a feeling. You, you, certainly were, you certainly weren't dancing on that ceiling, Bridgie, believe uh, uh, me. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Films, what yeah. we got for you, Lance? Films. It means film. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, films, um, yeah, I, I watch a lot of films. Um, the top ones for me, um, Inception. Brilliant. Inception, great film. Um, I also like... Now, Oppenheimer was great, I think, in, oh, the, in the cinema. Wow, that, it that's was not great. one of the best movies yeah. for a long time. That, yeah. that was outstanding, great, that. Great film, yeah. yeah. Um, what, yeah. what about Shawshank? Watched... No, Shawshank Redemption's got to be the best of all time. Which, which film? Shawshank it's Redemption. Fantastic. Really, really good. If you want something oh, okay. to have a I go have to at. watch it, yeah. yeah. Okay, I have to watch it's it. Yeah. It's incredible. Really, yeah, very good, yeah. very good. Yeah. I tell you what, I watched one last night, uh, Saltburn. Very, very strange. So I'm not gonna, I wouldn't recommend anybody under the age of eighteen watching it. But um, a very, very strange <laughs> one. Uh, I'd, yeah, I don't know why I watched I tell, it for so long. I'll give you what I'm going to give you one now. It's an Go Italian on. one. It's obviously subtitles before because I can't read and write anymore, which is a bit strange. But I'm glad I watched this one. Uh, it's called Gamora. It's about an Italian mafia situation. It is unbelievable. Okay. Gamora. Good. It's Sounds the best. Good. I think that's actually the best one I've ever seen, series-wise. Good morning. Well, there, you, there you go, Ilya. What okay. a way to finish the podcast, my friend. A recommendation for an Italian movie from one of the um, <laughs> legends of Leeds United. There you go. This is the official Leeds United podcast. 